How many of y'all know things are about ready to explode? They are. It's getting ready to happen big time, man. John chapter 10. John 10. Verse 7. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Then Jesus said to them again. Everyone say again. again. So he told them more than once. Amen. Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not what? Did not what? Hear them. It's amazing how many people pay more attention to the voice of the devil than they do the voice of God. Verse 8. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. So what's the thing the enemy tries to steal? Your identity. Who you are. Amen? To be okay. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But the hireling he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, Sees a wolf coming, leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. As the Father knows me, <coughs> excuse me, and the other sheep I have which are what? Not of this fold, them I also must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Why does the Father love him? Because he lays down his life. You think that might be significant for me and you? Amen. He says, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up. This commandment I receive from my Father. Whoa. Therefore there was division among them, the Jews of the, these sayings. And many of them said, he has a what? A demon is mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? In other words, the things that he was speaking were causing them to open spiritual eyes. Not only did he heal someone and open the eyes that were blinded, but he also saying his words were removing the scales so that they could see the things of God and hear the things of God. You know, we are in such a time and season right now. I mean, to be alive is awesome. You know, we are going to see the reward of the wicked. Amen? But God is raising up that army, that specific army for an end time it says here, he is known as the good shepherd. That's Jesus. He explains the process of new life. Everyone say new life. That's abundant. Amen. He said by laying down his old life, stepping into his new life, that others will know us as his children and warriors that are carriers of the fullness of life. There is a place, you know, people, there, there's how much do you want of God? That depends how much life you'll have. We're to be carriers of the life of God Almighty. Amen? Expressing his integrity. Expressing his character. But the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So you'll know them. If you're losing, if you're losing, amen, if the enemy's stealing from you, then he's got access to you. 
Somebody get it. If things are being destroyed, he's got access to you. But it comes to that point where Jesus must be your shepherd and everything. He is the one that leads you. You're to be a face-to-face -face communication with him. And Psalm 23. Fullness of life or life abundantly. We all want more. If you don't want more, there's something wrong with you. And I'm not talking about more material and stuff like that, amen? We want more of God. We want more of his presence. That's why people blow it and fall. Because they don't have enough of his presence. Oh, they might quote scriptures. Jesus even said, you search the scriptures thinking that you're saved, but you don't even know me. You know him in his presence. That's how you know him. Hello? 23. Glory. Psalm 23. Let's speak it. The Lord is my what? Come on now. He just said the good shepherd is Jesus. He's the one that brings you life and love abundantly. He's expressing the Lord is my shepherd. He's my overseer. He's the one that leads me. My eyes are on him. And I will not what? I will not what? I will not. That word want means lack. If he truly is your shepherd, you won't lack anything. Psalm 23, verse 3, or verse 2. It says, he makes me to what? To what? Lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. You know, sometimes people get so busy that they can't hear. They think that their works are going to gain God's favor. It doesn't work that way. It says, he restores my soul. In other words, he converts it. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not, what? Why? Because he's your what? Shepherd. So why are these people freaking out out there? They're masked to hell. Hello. You know why Jesus is not their shepherd? Does everybody get it? They're so afraid that Jesus truly isn't their shepherd. I was in Lowe's the other day, and this brother, that, there's a guy that sees me all the time in there. He goes, man, why don't you wear a mask? I said, because Jesus is my covering, and I know the truth. He said, well, I'm a believer. I said, well, bro, <laughs> you need to repent. I understand because you're an employee here, you have to because it's corporate. Okay, I understand that, or you'll lose your job. But in true reality, if they did fire you, it's called prejudice. Because there is no law that says you have to wear a mask. Does everybody get it? Man, I go in many places and tell me I need a mask. You don't like me not wearing a mask? Then I won't be your client. I won't be your customer. Too bad. I won't give them the time of day. Because you know why? Jesus is not their shepherd. There's a lot of corporations that Jesus is not their shepherd. Who is your shepherd? Is it the world? Is it the laws of the world? What is it? Who's your shepherd? This is where the big test is going all over globally. It's amazing to me still. I'm, some, they're driving around in a car. 90 degrees out and they're wearing a mask. What the heck's your problem? People are jogging. They're wearing a mask. Anyways, they're masked out, I'm telling you. And they live in fear. Why? Because Jesus is not their shepherd. Hallelujah. It says here in verse 4, Though I walk through the shadow of the of death, I will not fear evil. For you are with me. Hello. Do you know he's with you? If you know he's with you, then what do you got? To, what's the problem? He created all things, Amen. In other words, when things begin to happen in your life, they're not coming against you. They're coming against him. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they what? Comfort me. 
Verse 5, speak it. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely what? Goodness and mercy shall follow me. It sounds like fullness of life. Why? Because he's your, he's your shepherd. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No lack. He feeds us. He converts us. He spiritually feeds us. He leads us to the righteous paths that please him. He protects us and he surrounds us. That we're, and then, then he anoints us so we can reject all kinds of fear. He anoints us with power to overcome all of our enemies. Allowing goodness and mercy and the fullness of life to be released to us and manifested in us. All the days on earth. And then he says something powerful. He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, because I do not forsake assembling together. Does everybody get that? There's a special anointing when we assemble together. In Psalm 16. Psalm 16. People work very hard. And they work hard. If their heart's right, they're working hard because they're laboring unto the Lord. Amen? But then there are those who work hard to gain money for their pleasures. So those are two different type of people. Then there are those who work hard because they want to help humanity. And there's nothing wrong in those areas. But unless the Lord stays shepherd in every area of our labor, we must acknowledge him in all things always. We will be misled. Amen. People can fall into works instead of relationship. In Psalm 16, verse 7, there's safety in a multitude of counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me. Well, if he's your Lord and shepherd, amen, he's going to be always before you. If he's not, you're going to push him aside and say, I got it. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Now listen, it's difficult to set the Lord before you if you're not in God's presence enough. Amen? And that's the plan of the enemy. People think that you can just stay home and read their Bible and be, and be overcomers. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. You can have all the knowledge and go to hell. You must have God's presence. That's everything to me and you. Everything. That's why I was a drug addict. I was looking for fulfillment. Most of us were drug addicts, alcoholics. What were you we looking for? God's presence. Oh, the enemy had it counterfeited. Thought it was in a bottle, a needle, or whatever else. Verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shield, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is what? Fullness of joy and your, at your right hand are what? Pleasures evermore. That's called fullness of life. We're blessed with the fullness of life by what? Getting his counsel, his instructions. Always sending him first in all directions, decisions, and purchases. Hmm. He protects us from the path of corruption. He releases the path of the fullness of life by keeping us connected to the future of his promises and the presence of his love. We have access to all of his treasures. Does everybody get it? We have access to everything. Of course, you qualified for everything that you have access for. Glory. Ephesians 4. Fullness of life. You've got to ask yourself, do you want the fullness of life? It's a beautiful day out there today, isn't it? You know how many people are out there in torment? I mean, just go down the street. There's people all over the place in torment. It's terrible. People living behind buildings, addicted, families destroyed, all kinds of stuff going on. That's not the fullness of life God called for me and you. Amen? There's so much more. Ephesians 4.
verse 11. Glory, fullness. Some people only settle for part. I think that's kind of offensive for the price that he paid. Verse 11, and he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some t pastors and teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. To a what? Perfect person. To the measure of the statue of the what? Fullness of Christ. Which is also associated with the fullness of life. That we should no longer be what? Children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And this is where you got to ask yourself, am I doing my share? Am I doing my part in expanding the kingdom? Am I witnessing? Am I ashamed to talk about Christ or am I decree decreeing the gospel? This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their what? Their mind, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Wow. Again, we are in such a time of season. One of the things he's saying, of course, assembling to train and put to practice the things that we have learned and been taught. You got to always step back and am I putting these things to practice? Or am I just listening? Assembling to train and to put things to practice, the things that we've been taught by the anointing that each person should be tested for advancement. God wants to always promote us into the character of integrity of the perfection of an individual resulting in the fullness of Christ in life. Did you get all that? <laughs> you must have short, short, short hand then. I'll say that again. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Again, we assemble together for training to put things into practice. Amen? Things are what we've learned. Each person will be tested by God for advancement. If you fail the test, you don't advance. You stay until you get it. Amen? See, people want to promote themselves without passing the test. Tests are done by the character of integrity of Christ. If you're releasing the character and integrity of Christ, how you treat people is another way. Do you still hold grudges? Hello? Unforgiveness. These are things that God advances in an individual. And how their character is uh, compared to Christ. The more Christ, the less of us, the more advancement. There's more trust. Amen? 1 John 3. And with that, there's more release of the fullness of the life of Christ in us. There's a gentleman we've been praying for. We're waiting to hear what's, what, what's happening. I mean, he's a very, very wealthy gentleman. Well, I, I don't know if he's really a gentleman, but he's a person. Lots of money, spends millions of dollars, drives the Lamborghini and so forth. Drives drunk, owns all kinds of properties all over. Lives in Hawaii. Owns properties all over here. Travels back and forth. His family's trying to get him to a place where he gets help. 
And the police will not touch him because he pays them off. And he's slowly dying from alcoholism. And he treats everybody like an aggressive alcoholic, which is not very nice. Only God's divine intervention can rescue him. But see, because the world is easily bribed. It's easily paid off. They'd rather allow that man to die. Hello? Than to come against him. Because of the fear of they won't get money from him or whatever. Hallelujah. That's like hirelings. Amen? 1 John 3, verse 1. So those are men pleasers, not God pleasers. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. So the world doesn't know you. You and I are different. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he's pure. See, you and I were called out of the world of lust and corruption and deception. We are called to be children of God of eternity. Children of eternity. Everyone say, children of eternity. Knowing we will change into his image and likeness. Therefore, the world will not understand us. Why? Because we carry the fullness of the life of Christ in us. It makes it very difficult for them. You speak another language. You don't approve the things that they approve. We are living a fullness of life of Christ. We want more of him. See, the more that you earn his trust, the more things he allows you to do. Other than that, he'll put limitations on certain things. Again, you won't give kids that can't drive your car keys, amen, or anything else. Trust is earned. First John, let's go to the next chapter 4. Love has been what? Perfected among us in this, that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. That's why the world doesn't know you. There is no fear in love. There's no what? Fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? Again, as he is, so are we. No fear in perfect love. See, perfect love will assist in the fullness of life. We want life and life abundantly. We want all the blessings God has for us. He's got storehouses of blessings for us that he wants to release to us. But so many times when he gets ready to release something, it gets delayed because of something that we cooperated with the enemy. Why? Because when he knows it gets released and the enemy will steal it. First Peter. Fullness of life. In verse 8. Let 
Let's do it. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, what does he say? Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from the evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who what? Who do evil. We must be careful what we speak. Turn away from evil and unruly brethren. Seek and pursue peace to walk in the fullness of Christ's life. We're not to promote the things that God disapproves of. Amen? 2 Kings, verse 34. 2 Kings, 1734. Is everybody okay? You don't mind going there, do you? Okay. <laughs> what, are you still caught in Timothy? <laughs> Come out of Timothy. All right, let's grow for it. Let's speak it. To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord, nor do they follow their statutes or their ordinances or the law and commandment with the Lord had commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow down to them, nor serve them or sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up from the land of bondage, or Egypt, with great power and an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him you shall offer sacrifice. And what's our sacrifice today to the Lord? Praise and worship. Amen. And the statutes and the ordinances, the law and the commandment which we wrote to you, you shall be careful to observe them forever. You shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, nor shall you fear other gods. But the Lord your God shall fear, you shall fear, and he will deliver you from the hand of your enemies. If you do what? Reverence, honor, and respect him. Amen? Obey his commands. But the Lord your God shall, uh, however, they did not what? They did not obey, but they followed their former rituals. So these nations feared the Lord, yet they served their carved images. Also their children and their children's children that continued doing their, as their fathers did, even to this day. See, they had an appearance of fearing and reverencing the Lord. Amen? But they refused to let go of their past rituals, idols, and associations that opened a door to the thief. And what's the first thing the thief does? Begins to steal your identity. So they were not, they were able to listen, but here's something important. They could never cross over. Do you get that? They could never what? Cross over. And it's your responsibility and my responsibility to cross over into the presence of God. The more you cross over, the more you change. The more you're still fighting for your life, the more you're still opening your mouth and tripping over your tongue, the less you cross over. Amen? The more you're still touching and agreeing with things that God disapproves of, the less you cross over. The more you cross over, the more you change. This is what it's about. What are you crossing over into? His presence and His glory. When you worship, when you praise, you will cross and you come to that place where you cross over. The enemy loves to meet you right at that point of crossover so he can distract you. Does everybody get it? Because God knows and the enemy knows when you cross over, the enemy fears you. Hallelujah. One of the things that begins to happen in individuals because they can't cross over because they, they, they have a form of, they're able to listen, but they're not willing to let go of the things, especially their pride, their self-idols, things that have to agree. They can't cross over. Those are like chains that hold people to the physical realm, to the old man. They can't cross over. They can never cross over because they're never willing to cut loose. They got the butt syndrome. That's why they're always looking behind them, amen? 
tough crowd this morning, man. <laughs> Psalm 40. Praise God. <laughs> Psalm 40. <laughs> you know, people are living from their past to the present and from their future to the present. That's what we call butt ministry. And they're, they butt, butt everything. Verse 4. What's the first word? Blessed. That means favored. You want to be blessed? You want to be favored? Amen. He said, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. How many of y'all know that word make means you got a choice? You choose to trust. You have the power to choose. And does not respect the proud. Hello, he turns away from the proud. Nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book it is written of me. Now I want you to understand he's talking about us now. It's written of me and you. You and I are in a book. We are in the book of life. Amen. What is the first thing in verse 8 says? I do what? I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Do you think that if you don't delight to do his will, it's going to bring you life, full, fullness of life? I'm telling you. That's a requirement. But if you're not in God's presence enough, are you going to delight to do his will? No. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law or your words are within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the what? Great what? Assembly. Here we go again. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O oh Lord, you yourself know. I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the what? Great assembly. Blessed, favored, delight to do his will. He proclaimed the truth. He sang, praised, didn't hold nothing back. As he assembled together with the rest of the believers and got strengthened in God's presence. He rejected lies and pride, maintaining a humbleness and fellowship in the great assembly and testifying of God's goodness and mercy and power. It should be always ready for me and you. When the enemy attacks you, you just attack him back and give him God praise. Amen? Remember, the enemy fears you. And he fears when you're in God's presence. He knows when that anointing is on you. You know, the word tells us that the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit, it means being filled all the time. 1 Thessalonians 4. You want the fullness of God. These are things that God is requiring. Everything has a requirement. You couldn't get saved until you repented, right? In fact, even after you repented, you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. First Thess. Oh, happy days. Verse 1. First Thessalonians 4, 1. Finally. It's kind of like a conclusion type of thing, you know. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound what? More and more. 
just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. In other words, abound more and more in his life. For you know that what commandments we gave to you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Your what? Your sanctification, your separation, your personal fellowship with him. That you should abstain from what? Sexual immoralities. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in the sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Sanctification separation. You know, you know the things that are clean and unclean. Amen. You know the things that defile and don't defile. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit who tells you all things. The problem is, is people are not listening. They're not hearing. They're rejecting the conviction. Lack of crossover. It's always going to be that. Lack of God's presence, lack of crossover. Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? Lack of crossover. Lack of freedom. It says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Freedom. Psalm 37. Verse 5. Fullness of life. Let's speak it. Commit your way to the Lord. Hello. Trust also in him. And he shall what? He'll bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light. And your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Do not fear because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. And don't fret. It only causes harm. Why? Because he said, for evildoers shall be cut off. And I'm telling you, it's coming. It's around the corner. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. You know, wait takes patience. It takes endurance. It takes restraints over the flesh. Every one of us was born with a drive through attitude. Amen? I want it now. But as you begin to grow and mature in the Lord, you know that waiting is better. Why? Because we rushed and stepped on too many minds prior. You think we would learn it by now. Amen? <laughs> it says, for evildoers should be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. In other words, they will take possession. Listen, if you're going to inherit the earth, you think you're going to have life more abundantly? God's going to trust you with more things. He's going to trust you with more material things. Because material things will not be an idol to you. You don't care. If he says get rid of them, you get rid of them. And don't write me any notes telling me God told me, told you to give you all of this stuff. Amen? I've had calls from people say, hey, Lord told me to do this. I said, good. If he tells me, you got it. But most of the time, you know, it's like the same five people that come and tell me they're going to marry the same person. I want, that's a miracle. <laughs> <You know>? Hallelujah. <laughs> but hallelujah, it happens, I got to tell you. Praise God. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Verse 7, I want to go back to that for a second. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Amen? Now let's go a little further. Verse 10, for yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall not be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace or the abundance of the things that God has for us. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. 
starting at verse 1, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. That means don't forget his benefits. Amen? Don't forget. Now, a person that will forget his benefits was one that's distant from his presence. But if you, you're closer to his presence, his benefits are always there. You know that, why? Because the benefits are also associated with everything's going to work to the good. Everything's going to work to the good. It's all going to work to the good no matter what. Verse 3. Who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and what? Tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's my, I love that one. Verse 6. I claim this one every day. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Thank God. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't be gathering together, we'd all be dead. Amen? So again, we don't want to forget these benefits, the benefits of his promises. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Listen, when you don't know what to do, don't do nothing. Just wait. That's the problem. People do things without waiting on God. And they find themselves in trouble. Listen, the enemy is looking every single day in how to set you up for a fall. He's trying to set you up all the time. They fast and pray against you. There are witches that are signed against you. There are demons that are signed against you. They know where your weaknesses are and they know where your strengths are. But if you're crossing over the presence of God is protecting you they can't touch you amen they can't touch you first Peter 5 hallelujah in verse 5 Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your more mature people. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud. Who does he resist? The proud. But gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, that he may promote you and release more of this life abundant. Casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? Sober, which means what? Alert and be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can snap. Amen? He's trying to snare us into a net. He's trying to mislead us. He's trying to steal the things that God has paid the price for me and you. It says, resist him, steadfast where? In the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered, after you've been trained through suffering. Perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. So that you may live a life of the fullness of God Almighty. With freedom, with peace, joy, righteousness, prosperity. All of these things are available for each and every one of us. But don't look back. Go forward. Press in. Cross over as much as you can. Put a guard over your mouth and your eyes and your ears. Restrain that flesh. And take dominion over those emotions. Dear goodness. You know, that's how the enemy attacks us, through the emotion. Emotion, emotion, emotion. Feelings, feelings, feelings. You get around people that always say that's all they do is talk about how they feel. Tell them to shut up. 
you gladly spare one of your socks. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to close at Mark 8. Mark 8, 34. It says, when Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also. You know, I want you to know that the Lord calls you every morning to him. Every morning he waits. He calls you to him. What he wants to do is he wants to hear your words come out of your mouth that is associated with him in the morning. First thing, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. Hello? If you've got a coffee maker next to you, don't say a word. Press the button. Good morning, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And Jesus called them all to himself every day he calls you. With his disciples also. So he was more than just calling his disciples, wasn't he? He was calling everybody. He's ringing everybody's doorbell every morning. And he said to him, whoever desires to come after me, let him do what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Why? He's trying to bring them life and life abundantly. The fullness of the life. For whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, he said, he's going to have it. For what will a profit man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will man give in exchange for his soul? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. That's the formula, amen? We all know that. Abundant life. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight and follow. If you're not a fighter, you'll be, a, you'll be defeated. You don't gain anything without a fight. You have to fight even to get to the place to cross over, don't you? Amen? But it's well worth it to have life abundantly in the fullness of life of God. In this side. You don't have to fight for it when you get home. Amen. We got to fight for it here. Why? We're to bring heaven on earth. So don't quit. Don't wimp out. Know that everything's going to work to the good. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you seal your word this morning. And bring it to remembrance of who we are in you. As warriors, and an extension of your image, likeness, and character, that we live a life, a fullness of life, abundant, that's been released to us in heaven as we exchange our life full of fullness of life in Christ Jesus. And everybody said, Amen.